family. Tell him I'm coming. No! So, would you like to know who supposedly had all the money in the world at one point? Well, this movie, All the Money in the World, supposedly tells you that. But what did I think about it? Well, let's find out. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for All the Money in the World. I really do appreciate it, but before we get into the review, my last movie review for 2017, go ahead and help. I can't even talk. Go ahead and help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I do make uploads and give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So, like I said, this is my last review for uh, 2017. It is not my last video for 2017. I think I'm going to have two or three more pop up later today as well. Uh, but this is my review for All the Money in the World. Um, it is directed by Ridley Scott. Uh, really Scott for the most part is a pretty good director to me. I like him for the most part. He's done some great movies like Gladiator, uh, G.I. Jane, The Martian, Prometheus. Um, you know, I really do enjoy those films. He's also did some stinkers like Alien Covenant. Um, he's, you know, what? Uh, oh, Exodus, Exodus, Gods and Kings. I could not stand that movie. Uh, he also did Robin Hood that came out in 2010, and that's been a pretty, you know, that was very disappointing. And those are his stinkers. And he also has some movies that are in between, like, you know, uh, yeah, what was it, Body of Lies and just a few other films. But for the most part, I do enjoy his movies, and he is the one behind this. And um, right now, as I'm filming this, I really don't like to date. Well, no, I'm not going to tell you what day it is, but I did see this movie on Christmas Day. Uh, with my family. Um, I had an opportunity to see it before that, but I missed that opportunity. And um, I'll just go ahead and say, for the most part, I really did enjoy the movie, but I wasn't going to do a review about it because one, you know, I, I, of course, I talk about movies. I have a channel. I have a site, but true stories are more difficult for me, at least to talk about, because there's only so many things you can talk about as far you can you can't talk about the characters the story the decisions they made etc you can only talk about the way the story was told because it's based on a true story or you know based off a true story or a book but about this film not only is it based on a true story but all of the uh, footage is not necessarily true at the very end of this movie there's a subtitle that comes up that says that this is based off true events something based off true events and based off a true story are two com completely different things to me based on a true story is predominantly majority of the movie is all based on a true story based on true events is just they you know pick apart certain scenes and certain events and those are true and they fill in the rest for dramatic effect and there was a subtitle at the end that said that this is based on a based on true events and a good portion of it is based on um you know just made up for dramatic effects and i kind of you know that kind of just turned me off from the whole film entirely i mean i still enjoyed it but at the same time me i'm just like okay if this is my opinion you you're entitled to have yours i'm just kind of like okay if you can't tell the true story from what it from what it really is don't do it don't tell it if you don't feel that it's a good enough story to tell how it is Maybe it's just not good enough to, you know, make a film about. And it just makes me feel that you're just trying to make money. Of course, making films, making movies is a business. I completely understand that it is a business first. But me as a film fan, I like movies to be treated as a piece of art first that you can make money from, you know, if it's good enough. But, you know, that's the end of my rant right there. Now, at the intro of this video, um, I did the quotation marks because I was like, supposedly, who is the richest man in the world? And this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to see this movie is because um, in the trailers and the marketing, that was like, you know, John, John Paul Getty, the written, not only the richest man in the world, but the richest man in history. And no, there was not a man that like popped up on the screen and was doing all these motions. That's just, you know, me being silly or whatever. But I was like, wait a minute. Um, this goes into my complaint about this movie being based on dramatic uh, true events and the rest is just for dramatic effect because in my research, 
John Paul Getty was not, he's probably in the richest man in the world at the time that this movie took place, which is in Rome. Um, well, a part of it took Rome, a part of it took place in the States in the 1970s, 1973 to be exact. But he wasn't the richest man in history, okay? That title belongs to a gentleman by the name of Mansa Musa from Mali. And he was around from 1280 AD to 1337 AD. I remember coming back home, I was telling my little brother, like, hey, man, Jean Paul Gator was not the richest man in history. It was Mansa Musa from Mali. That was a uh, country in, uh, um, in West, uh, a civilization in West Africa. And I got the dates wrong. I was saying like three to 400 AD, but it's actually, you know, in the 13th century or 1280 AD to 1337 AD. Now, right now, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I f I'm forgetting the name of the guy that is the CEO of Amazon that's uh, that recently just passed Bill Gates as the richest man in the world. He's like worth $98 billion. God, what is his name? The guy... Oh, I, I, I just have to look it up. Sorry, guys. I, I thought that I would have that memorized. I usually do, but I am having a brain fart right now. Jeff Bezos. I don't have to look it up. I, I remember Jeff Bezos. Okay. So right now, Jeff Bezos thing is like 92, 95, 98 billion dollars. That's how much he's worth right now. He is the wealthiest person in the world. Now, Mansa Musa, um, what his wealth will be today is, I believe, 400 billion. So that's over four times, um, you know, the wealth of Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and all that stuff. Oh, I mean, that's like, golly. I remember somebody was telling me that it was like three to four trillion dollars. Um, I mean, but, you know, since that was in the 13th century, it's kind of hard to like, you know, measure all that, you know, but he was the richest man in the world. It's kind of sad because how he lost all of his uh, his fortune. Um, he like crashed the world's economy because the man was so generous that he would just go around parts of the world just giving away gold, just giving it away, giving it away, giving it away to people. Just like I have so much here. I don't need all this. I mean, I mean, four hundred billion dollars or more. You don't need all that money. But that like crashed the world's economy. And also people found out that, you know, he was giving so much gold away and he was so rich. So, you know, everybody in the world just started attacking him over and over and over and over and over again. And, you know, he eventually, you know, lost his fortune. But I digress back onto the movie. But I, I had to say that he, he was a sultan, a king, an emperor. And so, you know, that's one of the things that kind of turned me on to the movie because I was like, OK, I want to I want to hear what they're talking about. And all the money in the world saying Jean Paul Gett is the richest when I know Mansa Musa is and, you know, you know, they kept calling him that in the movie. And that's just something that I had to talk about. But um, there was a lot of contra Well, you know, somewhat a lot of a controversy over this film, because originally the role of Jean Paul Getty was supposed to go to Kevin Spacey. But there was a number of sexual allegations um, against this man to where uh, the studio was just like, look, man, we don't want all of this drama. We're trying to, you know, fill up the theaters, trying to get this box office receipts. We can't have no person. Uh, that's being accused of this bringing down our potential sales and so the movie came out uh wide release on the 25th of december it was released on the 22nd uh, but on november 8th they made the decision to go in and reshoot all of the scenes now they replaced kevin spacey with christopher Plummer. Um, it was a the role was originally supposed to go to Jack Nicholson, but he turned it down. Um, Kevin Spacey was doing the role, but he was replaced by Christopher Plummer. Christopher Plummer um, only had two weeks to remember his lines, and um, the reshoots took eight days, and um, you know it also cost ten million dollars. Um, there's also somebody by the name of Gail Harrison. Well, I don't I don't talk about that yet. So, um, and then I, also when I was looking some things up. You know, Kevin Spacey is a great actor. Um, I remember seeing the trailer with him in the movie. He just seemed really cold and just like he didn't really give a crap about his money or whatever. And so I got to stop saying whatever. I'm sorry. But when I was watching the movie, Christopher Plummer's role was like he was really warm and soft and enduring, you know, with his family. It just kind of seemed like, you know, he was a nice man. And so um, really, Scott was just kind of saying that when he was reshooting Christopher Plummer's role, um, his role, he did not want to show Christopher Plummer 
Kevin Spacey's performances because he wanted him to do his own thing. And he said that, wow, you know, they both play the role so different, you know, each caters to the film, you know, but of course they're not going to use Kevin Spacey's stuff. And, you know, they went on making the movie. Um, now in this film, what it is about is, uh, John, John, J E A N Paul Getty's great, uh, grandson, John Paul Getty, the third J O H N is kidnapped in Rome and since Christopher, or since John Paul get John Paul Getty is like you know super rich, of course they want a ransom. And the the his daughter Gail Harris, who was being played by Michelle Williams, the role was originally um, given to Angelina Jolie, but she turned it down for unknown reasons or reasons that I don't know. And then um, Natalie Portman, you know Star Wars and uh, uh, what is the movie she won the Oscar for? Um, Black Swan, she did a great job on that. You know, she turned it down as well because she was expecting her second baby, but then it eventually went over to Gail Harris. But Gail Harris is like the middle in all of this. She's not... Well, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Gail Harris in this movie is not the daughter of Jean-Paul Getty. She is the daughter-in-law. Um, Jean-Paul Getty has a son, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, she's in the middle of this. She's just like, oh my gosh... I don't have any money. I'm not a real Getty. You know, uh, father-in-law, Jean-Paul Getty, please help me. Your grandson has been kidnapped. And he's like, no, I'm not paying for no ransom or whatever, which is another thing that wanted, you know, intriguing me to see this mom. I'm like, man, this is your freaking grandson. Like, why do you not want to pay the ransom to, you know, get your grandson back? You know, you know, you can't replace family or whatever. So that is one reason why I wanted to see that, this movie and also the richest man in the world thing. Now, I know I've, I've talked about a lot of the stuff that necessarily don't have to do with the movie. I did enjoy the movie for the most part. Uh, not I want to say for I mean, I, I enjoyed the movie. It had some pretty decent performances. Um, I did not know how the movie was going to end, even though I didn't want to look up to see if, since this is based on true events, if they got the boy back or not, if they paid the ransom. I just wanted to go in cold and be surprised. But um, it was an interesting story. Um, you know, the characters, they did a great job, especially uh, Mark Wahlberg with this scene at the end. Gail, not Gail Harris, but Michelle Williams did a great job, too. You know, I really did like everything that this film had to offer other than the false things, which I, I don't know which is true or false. So it's just kind of hard for me to talk about it, to be honest with you. Um, I was watching my I, I remember when I was watching the movie, something that turned me off in the beginning, that there was a lot of time lapses jumping from city to city, from country to country, jumping back and forth through different times and things like that with subtitles. And I'm just like, like after the eighth, ninth, the 10th subtitle to show me what year or city or country was. And I was getting frustrated, like, man, this is kind of hard to follow. Usually that's not something that's difficult for me, but I remember being a little distracted and annoyed. But once things got to the actual present day of the movie, you know, things did, you know, start to flow a lot smoother. And um, Christopher Plummer as Jean-Paul Getty, he did a pretty decent, well, he did more than a decent job. He did a great job in the role. And I was just like, you know, when before he, I will, first of all, I was really surprised with how much um, uh, that he was in the film because I'm thinking maybe he's gonna just pop up about two or three times because this is unprecedented. This is unheard of. No one reshoots a movie uh, of this size with this amount of scenes a month and a half before it's released. That just doesn't necessarily happen. I mean, Mark Wahlberg had to go shoot um, on his birthday. Well, no, the, I'm sorry. The the first day of regular shooting started on his birthday in June. But he had they had to go shoot over the Thanksgiving holiday. So you can only imagine how frustrated some of the family was, you know, in America. They had to go. Up. Well, I don't know if they actually shot in Rome or used the Rome setting. Um, I forgot that part. But, you know, this is unprecedented. So giving just how great the performance was by Christopher Plummer and how he had such a short amount of time to uh, memorize his roles. He did get to read the script because he was considered before Kevin Spacey was cast, but just that time and the amount of scenes that he had in the movie that he had to do out in a short amount of time, he did a great job there. And what also just interested me about his performance and his character in the movie was I was just like, okay, you seem like such a Kang person. So why is it so difficult for you to want to give pay the ransom to get your grandson back and the film did a great job of addressing that i mean at one point in time they was having breakfast slight spoiler and um he had his one of his other grandsons i think he had like 14 grandsons he had him opening up his mail it was just like a stack like like a stack 
And like every letter after letter after letter was just people asking and begging and motion for money. Like, hey, I'm going through this. Can I have some money? Hey, can I, can I have some money? And I can understand that that can get really tiring and just like I'm tired of everybody, you know, asking for my money. I got I earn my money. I work for it. You know, um, he got his money from oil um, from over in the east or whatever. And, you know, he worked and he just didn't. You know, everybody always had their hand out. And also, you know, he had the mindset to where, you know, hey, uh, if I just pay this ransom, then I got 14 grandchildren. People are going to be trying to kidnap my kids from everywhere. Try, and then I'm just having to have to pay ransom after ransom after ransom if I just, you know, pay so easily. So that, you know, that, um, that, that, was, that was a good point to me. And also in the movie, um, the uh, kidnappers were anonymous. And I, uh, every, like, everybody was sending in fake letters to the FBI trying to pretend like they was a kidnappers because they wanted a piece of the pie. They wanted some of the cake. So that's just another example as well. Doing this whole kidnapping, sorry about that. Uh, we got multiple perspectives from everybody involved. We got the perspective from, of course, Mark Wahlberg, a gentleman by the name of Fletcher that was over uh, John Paul Getty's, um, um, like, you know, protection and, you know, bodyguard and just his security. Of course, we got the kidnappers um, perspective and the kidnapped. We got the worldview and and we also got the worldview from um, Gail Harris's mother, um, John Paul Getty, the grandson that was attacked. But one thing that really uh, just stood out to me is we really did get to see the perspective from the actual kidnappers without the kidnapped boy being there. And let's kind of how they lived and how they were trying to escape and stay undercover and things like that. And, you know, their motive behind all this besides just money and things like that. So that was um, that, that was pretty entertaining. There was a few moments I was at the edge of my seat, kind of in a way, just not knowing how this would end. It's like, OK, hey, he escaped. Oh, no, he, he didn't escape. I thought he escaped or, you know, they're going to catch the bad guys this way and that way i didn't know how the movie was going to end and um it was kind of a guessing game all the way to the end um you know and that you know that's pretty much it again it's kind of hard to talk about movies that are based on true events but the movie just admits that a lot of it is false um but i i was entertained uh by it and i think you will too be i think you will be too if i had to rate all the money in the world out of a one out of ten i would give it an 8.5 out of 10 yes an 8.5 out of 10 but guys that's just my opinion have you seen all the money in the world or do you want to see it have i turned you on have i turned you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up and if you don't that's fine go ahead and subscribe to my channel go to my website check me out there i just did uh implement a mobile version of it still has a few little kinks i'm trying to work out here and there but hey you can you can only do so much at one time look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff it's right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my last movie film review of 2017 we're gonna go into 2018 and it's gonna go down and i cannot wait we got a lot of great movies and yeah all the money in the world but guys again thank you so much and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace